Are you wondering if the ASUS ZenBook 13 works well under Linux? I'll break it down and show you what this Ultrabook brings to the table. Stay tuned! Hey there everyone, this is a, a review for this laptop, which is the ASUS UX325JA. I believe it's a weird, I don't think it is, but it sounds like it's a Japanese model, but it's actually not. Of course it has an American keyboard. And the first thing I want to do is actually turn this on, actually show you the boot menu. So we're just going to try to press F2. So you can see here, this is where it looks like. It's actually really fancy, it's UEFI. Um, of course, if you're going to be installing Linux, you want to disable the secure boot. So I believe you would just go in advanced uh, mode, which is F7. And you would just go to security. And then you would just uh, click on this. And you just cl click on disable this. Um, let's try to go back without saving. And that should boot up into the laptop. So of course it, this came pre-installed with Windows 10. And I recommend that you actually apply all the updates uh, before you actually install um, your favorite OS. In that case it's the Ubuntu, the latest version. Um, it's because you want to install the latest firmware on this. Uh, making sure that there's uh, no errors whatsoever. So I actually put this... So yeah, as you saw, it actually turned on really fast, and as you can see, everything here works out of the box. Uh, so um, this is how it functioned when I uh, launched the live USB. Nothing wrong with the touchpad. Uh, the Wi-Fi worked like it. it um, the thing the thing about these laptops is, uh, especially the new ones, they they have uh, the AX wireless AX. So that's actually you know successor of wireless AC, so I actually had a problem with those types of uh, Wi-Fi chipsets, uh, especially if they're not Intel, but uh, this laptop actually comes with the Intel chipset, uh, the Wi-Fi chipset, so uh, it actually performs uh, really well. I had no issues whatsoever. It, it, it's really fast. It, yeah, it downloads really good, and yeah, it's really good. Um, let's see. I, I would say that the, uh, in terms of that, ports work. Uh, the audio isn't the best, although it has this fancy like um, like branded audio. Uh, not sure what this is, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not that bad. Uh, yeah, camera works fine. Uh, card reader, yep, it's part of the ports. Um, Bluetooth, I believe this is a uh, Bluetooth 5.1. Uh, this works really well. Um, there's not any any that much issues. If you actually go into settings, I actually use this with a wireless Bluetooth mouse and it works really good. Uh, there's no disconnects, there's no hiccups. Uh, of course, you would get that if you have a poor Bluetooth adapter, but this is uh, really um, well built. So, so the next thing I actually want to cover is um, how this laptop uh, sleeps. Let's say it goes in suspend, and this is all done under, under JDM. Uh, I personally don't like JDM too much. Uh, feels pretty heavy, but uh, I currently haven't found a really good way to uh, use something else such as LightDM, but uh, yeah, so far JDM has not given me any weird issues whatsoever, uh, so let's actually put the laptop to sleep, so um, of course you want to enable this through GNOME Tweaks, uh, and uh, I believe just the normal settings manager, but yeah, just make sure the uh, uh, suspend on on closed lid is enabled and let's actually test it So sometimes when you turn on the laptop it, the screen might still be on but um, uh, Especially when you just turn it on the first time, but when you do this uh, the second time um, This is actually uh, just work. So um, Of course, you, you know it worked when the screen is turned off, you know if it's inside uh, There's no flash and of course, when this starts to, um, you know, uh, flash uh, this little light, uh, this is actually something universal with any laptop that you get. You know, if it's flashing a light like this, you know, it means it didn't, it's sleeping right now. Of course, when you wake it up, it, it's gonna 
yeah, it's just it's just gonna wake up and everything will be fine. So the next thing I want to do is um, I actually want to give you a a direct uh a direct value as to how much power this uses. And before I do that, I actually want to say that. So the battery size of this laptop is 67 watts, watt hours. So yeah, uh, any laptop that's like at least 50 or even 60, that's really, uh, this is really excellent. And this is, uh, I was actually thinking of getting the LG Gram, but I wasn't sure if, you know, I'm not familiar with LG laptop. So um, yeah, I actually went with, the, went with this instead. And you know, I used a, an Asus laptop before. So yeah, it was working really well. So we're gonna launch Pseudo PowerTop. And this is a really good tool, uh, especially when you want to see how the laptop is using. Of course, um, you want to install PowerTop <laughs> itself, of course, and TLP. So um, with Ubuntu, when you install it, uh, the system D service will be enabled by default. So you know that basically means it's gonna uh, it's gonna apply the optimizations for the battery uh, when you just install it. So um, how do you tell if it's actually good or not? So um, see if you guys can see this. So we want to re really mainly look at that. Um, so as you can see, when this laptop is idling, uh, you will really want to look at how much it's discharging. So um, usually if it's around three watts or even less than that, that's, uh, that's a really good sign. Uh, as you can see, um, if it's idling, it's gonna last for 14 hours. That's, that's, that's really impressive. Um, and again, this is really, it really depends on how big the battery is. Uh, 67 watts that's gonna be really um this gonna this is gonna last you much longer than even the Lenovo ThinkPad and the XPS 13 um yeah I would those are really the most popular laptops on the market uh for Linux but I'm really surprised that the battery capacity is and it, it's still that it's still okay but this is way better um and it actually and it's fully and it runs and it actually runs everything well I'm I feel like I'm <laughs> one of the only ones who uh, discovered this. And I, I don't see any other video uh, that people are making about this. And if, you, and if we look inside more into this tool and we go in this tab called tunables, we can actually see that um, this is actually optimizing almost everything. Um, of course, it's not gonna be perfect, you know, right here, there's, it's, con it's considered bad because, you know, it can't do anything else, but the majority of it was uh, the optimizations for the battery were applied. So that's really good. And you can tell that this uh, uh, this is uh, this is something that's really finished. It's gonna last you the whole day. All right, so the final things I wanna share with you is uh, the the RAM and the storage. Um, so um, of course I have a couple apps open here. Um, so the memory's pretty high. So, and storage is uh, 256 gigabytes. So uh, pretty decent. I That's really enough for me. Um, I know I almost have it halfway full, but um, I don't really go that much. But yeah, uh, in terms of uh, how you want to set up your RAM, if you ha if you get a model that's uh, that's eight gigabytes, I recommend using Swap File. Um, uh, by default, Ubuntu, Ubuntu sets that up, but I recommend um, you know doing it again, you know deleting the Swap File and just uh, you know doing it yourself so that you can possibly put more. Um, of course, I'm using six gigabytes, so uh, that's gonna be extra for me. And not just that, uh, once you activate that, uh, you actually wanna set some swap settings inside uh, inside the, the main folder. So that folder is etc sysctl.d. And I'll leave all these instructions at my blog. Uh, just, uh, just check on the description down below and just click on the direct link. Uh, yeah, it's at www.markpress.dev. And so yeah, anyways, back to the video, we want to go inside etc sysctl.d and, and we want to create two files. Uh, these are gonna be called, uh, it starts with 99-swappiness.config, uh, you know the swappiness. Um, typically that's that's a really familiar setting. And then something that we're not familiar with is uh, VFS cache pressure. So this is actually optional, but um, I'll show you why we wouldn't want to change this. But to start off, we want to look at the, uh, the swappiness. So I actually have this set to 10. Um, of course, you can have more. I think this ranges from 0 to 200. Of course, 200 is, I wouldn't recommend something like that. That's basically using it entirely. 
um, we want to avoid as much as possible. We don't want to put too much wear and tear on, this, as, on the NVMe. So um, yeah, ten's a good start. And this this um, this is actually uh, this actually um, configures the caching how much cache we want to use. Um, the value is between one uh, zero and hundred for this actually. And a um, hundred is labeled as fair, but of course we want to try using. Uh, we want to try putting something a bit less. So fifty is a good range. And um, yeah, this is something that was recommended from a um, blog site. I'll link that in my blog post that you can go over and read. And yeah, those are really two settings I recommend uh, if you want to add more RAM in general. And that's about it. So thank you for watching the video. I hope this uh, video helped you in deciding. Whether whether this uh, ASUS ZenBook was a good uh, laptop, especially for Ubuntu, um, everything works out of the box. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Um, yeah, thank you for watching the video. I hope I talk to you soon.